Hey everyone, welcome to New Vision Online. As you've seen in our social media posts due to uh, Pastor Jerry and Sister Sherry uh, having the coronavirus and a few others that uh, we've decided to just do online services for this week and next week. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to start getting back in to the house uh, as things settle down, we pray. Um, but for right now, this is, this is what we're doing. So we just want to welcome you and say thank you for joining us. I pray that today will be a blessing for you as we worship together. Uh, I'll be bringing the word here in just a few minutes, a word that I believe that God has laid on my heart. And I ask you to continue to keep our pastor and his wife in prayer as they recover. Um, they're doing better. Just there's, It's just a, re, a road of recovery, and we want God to continually and completely heal them. So let's just pray, and then we will just uh, begin our service today. Lord, thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. And I know that God right now is uncertain times and times that we have a lot of um, uh, confusion and fear and anxiety and all that. And I just pray that today those things will be pushed aside, Lord, that in the name of Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, God, we will experience just a freedom today, Lord, that we will uh, not only be able to celebrate our freedoms as a nation, um, but to be able to celebrate our freedom in you, Jesus. Lord, we love you and we praise you and we pray your blessing upon our worship together, our gathering together as the body of Christ, um, even though there may be space between us, Lord, as we come together in faith, trusting that you're going to accomplish the, your will and the work that you set out to do in our lives. We love you today, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship together.
On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil by good. Romans twelve twenty and 21. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. James 1 and 19. Your perfect love is casting out free. 
As I said earlier, uh, we are doing our services online this week and next week. Um, Pastor Jerry, uh, if he's feeling up to it, tonight is going to go live from his home with just a word, a devotion. So hopefully that all works out. If not, we'll, we'll have something up there um, just to encourage you tonight. But I uh, just pray that uh, Brother Jerry will have strength enough to be able to just at least greet us tonight. So look forward to that probably around 7 p.m. Um, Anyway, uh, today I, I, you know, I've been, I was praying about, you know, what God wanted to speak to us, not just me, not just through me, but speak to us as the body of Christ. And so uh, I, I want us to just uh, go ahead and open with prayer, and then we're just going to jump right into um, the message today. Thank you, Lord, that we can come together and that we can uh, spend a few moments um, just talking about your word and what you desire to speak in us and through us in this season of our lives. Now, Lord, we just pray your anointing be upon the word and upon me, God, that I will not do your word any harm, that I will speak what is truth and truth uh, that is needed right now, God. I pray that you'll touch the, the listener, Lord, no matter what time they're listening to this, that it will be a right now word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, um, you know, we're gathering uh, together today, and, and this is the weekend that we have celebrated um, our independence as a nation, July 4th, uh, yesterday. And so um, we've, you know, we, we've lit off fireworks, unless, you know, you're stuck in quarantine and didn't have a chance to buy fireworks. Um, you know, whatever it is, you, you've sort of enjoyed the day. You've taken a moment to hopefully say thank you, God, for the freedoms that we do have. Um, and so with all of the celebration of freedom, um, it really got me to thinking about that word. And so simply today, our title of our, my message is, is freedom. I know it's not very glamorous necessarily, but I, I think the simplicity of it is also very profound. Um, and so uh, with everything that we find contained in that word and even the concept of freedom as a lifestyle, that's where I want to talk to us today. And I kind of want us to jump into the scriptures. Before we do that, though, I kind of wanted us to think about freedom for a moment. I wanted us to think about the freedoms that we have and or that we don't have. Maybe there's some freedoms that you don't have. Um, and so as I was thinking about freedom, these are just some of the things that have come to my mind. I'm reminded of so many, so many thousands and thousands who have given their lives in our history so that we might attain freedom. Um, I'm reminded of the men and women, many, many thousands of men and women, like my father who, who served in Vietnam, who served our country fighting for our freedom and live with the scars of war and conflict. They live with the battles that they faced so that we might have freedom to even, you know, disagree uh, with one side or the other. I'm reminded that in much of our history, there were many who never knew freedom. We declared freedom. We, were, we, we celebrate the freedom from uh, an empire that was uh, trying to rule us. We, we celebrate freedom, we declare freedom, but there were many, we, can, we cannot deny that in our history, as a nation, there have been many, many, many people who never, ever, as, as free a land as we were, they never experienced what freedom was. And we know certainly one of the most glaring is uh, slavery. 
And I, I think back to our history and I think of the many movements forward in trying to produce freedom. And, you know, we had many declarations and proclamations, and I'll, I'll, I'll speak to that a little later, of freedom. But just because there's a proclamation doesn't mean there's actually freedom. I'm reminded that unless we allow the work of Christ in our lives, we will never truly know spiritual freedom. I don't want to just talk about the physical freedom, even though I, I think we must acknowledge that and we must continually strive to be a nation that is not just free in its concepts, but free in its practice. <clears throat> but we will never know true spiritual freedom unless we have freedom in Christ. Now, there are many people who will disagree with me on that. You know, people who don't follow Christ as, as a lifestyle and as, as their Lord and Savior. They would disagree with me. So today I want to present a scriptural uh, point of view. And my prayer is that the Spirit of God, if you're listening today and maybe you disagree with me, and maybe you've not made a commitment to Christ, that the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to you and you will begin to seek out uh, what God desires to do in your life. So let's take a look at God's Word. Today we're going to look in Ephesians chapter 1. And uh, Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus. And uh, he writes a number of, of uh, powerful uh, scriptural principles in the book of Ephesians. We know on spiritual warfare, Ephesians chapter 6, you need to go read that and, and really apply those things in your life. But I want us to, to start at the beginning. And um, we're going to start in actually verse 3 of chapter 1. And uh, we're going to read, and as we read, I just want to kind of talk through this. I want us to see what is, what is the Scripture saying to us today about freedom. It says in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Now, I'm going to be reading in the New Living Translation in all of these passages that I'll read today. Uh, it says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. God has a plan. I just want to pause and say God has a plan and has had a plan since before you were born for your life. It says that he chose you. He had uh, you in mind when he began to form the worlds into existence. I think about, when I think about choosing, I think back to when we're on the playground and we're all, you know, standing there and they're picking teams. And of course, you know, you know how unfair playground picking is. It, it's always that, you know, the first person picked is the pr person who is probably the most athletic, most dominant person. And then it, it goes down and, and in skill, in that particular, whatever it is you're doing, if it's football, it's the most skilled football players are going to go first. And then it's down to whoever might be left. And, um, you know, in, it can be a really difficult thing for some because they may not be as athletic. They want to play, they want to be a part, but they're always picked last. And for some, that, that has left a scar. It's left a mark. Maybe you, maybe this is bringing back some, some difficult memories for you as you're thinking about your old playground days and you hated it because maybe you were one of those that was always picked at the bottom. Can I tell you this? That God didn't wait till the end to pick you, to pick you. God chose you. He chose each one of us first, right? He put each one of us first. How he can do that? I don't know. He's God. I just know this, that we weren't an afterthought when God began to choose, that God chose us with intent and with purpose. And I just want to remind you of that today. God chose you. doesn't matter where you've, you've been. doesn't matter how you came into existence and what circumstances surrounded. It doesn't matter the choices that you've made up to this point. You may have been a complete, what society would com consider a complete failure, and yet God chose you. And he, he has a destiny and a plan for you if you'll choose to follow him. 
And he gave, and it gave him great pleasure. That's the other thing I wanted to mention. It gave him great pleasure. It says that God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. And, and that word adopt has special meaning for uh, me and my family because we've adopted two children. And, and I can't think of them in any other way but mine. I, they're not my adopted children. They're just my children. Uh, but uh, it says that he, ad in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. That is what he wanted to do, not was forced to do it, not was like, well, I feel a little sorry for him. No, no, no. It says that he's what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. You may feel in your life today that you've not given, uh, you know, a lot of people reason to smile. Maybe you feel like your life has been one failure after another. Maybe you feel like that you've been a, just a disappointment. And that every decision you make seems to always end up the wrong direction. I'm just telling you right now that God views you a totally different way than you're viewing yourself right now. God loves you. He picked you in advance. He chose you. He did it because he wanted to. And when he made the decision, it gave him great pleasure. You make God happy. You bring God joy even in your broken state. Now, he doesn't want to leave you there. And that's what we're talking about today, freedom. He doesn't want to just leave you there. He wants to bring you into a right relationship with him. And you don't have to wait till the end of this message if that's you that God is speaking to you. Right now, you can just say, God, I, I surrender. I, I, I want what you have for me. As we continue on in the scripture, it says in verses six and seven, so we praise God for the glorious grace. Can we just say praise God for his glorious grace? He has poured out on us. He doesn't just flick it at us. He doesn't just give us a little bit of measure. He says that he's poured it out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Freedom has a high price. The greater the sacrifice, the higher the value. It's through this sacrifice that we've just read about, the sacrifice of Jesus on a cross that we read about 2,000 years ago, that Jesus died on a cross for us. The sacrifice that he, he gave up his life so that we could be returned to a right place with God. It is through his sacrifice that we can receive grace and love unconditional. Without limit, we can receive the grace and the love of God. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10 continues this way. It says, He has showered His kindness on us, along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us His mystery, His mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill His own good plan. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Did you, did you hear what it, that just said? It isn't about the purpose of Christ, of all that Christ did, was that his plan might be fulfilled and might be accomplished. So I'll just insert this right here, that if you're wondering why God isn't working out all your plans, it's because it was never about your plans. It never was. It was never about your plans, but his plans are always infinitely better. You see, God said right here in his scripture that it was his mysterious will regarding Christ to fulfill his own good plan. And this is his plan, that at the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. This is the promise. That God is going to make things right. And that at one point, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. That at the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. And it's not this type of kingdom that we see portrayed in movies where they go out and they conquer everybody. And they, they destroy and demolish and wipe out everything. And plant their flag. No, the, the kingdom of God is not meant to tear down, but to build up, to, to restore. So when he comes and he applies 
uh, his plan to this. It's not that he comes to plant his flag and demolish everything. He is coming to bring uh, restoration and freedom. That's what God is desiring to do. As we continue on in the scripture through verse 14, beginning in 11, it says, Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles, those of us that have been grafted in, have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee. It is his stamp that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. The whole purpose of freedom in Christ is restoration and to receive the inheritance of the kingdom of God. As I prepared for this message, I was reading part of an article that was published on uh, Billy Graham's website. And I, I was just searching around for different perspectives on freedom. And in this article, they shared four truths about freedom. And I want to share those truths with you today. The first says this. People have been searching for it for thousands of years. Speaking of freedom, and this is the truth. Ever since mankind has been on this planet, we've been seeking for freedom, searching for freedom. And we can see this throughout history. You see where the devil, he has used evil practices of slavery and physically and spiritually. It's not just the physical slavery. He's spiritually enslaved people trying to oppress mankind. History has continually repeated itself. And we can look at our own United States and see that, yes, proclamations were made. But we have still battled slavery and the enslaved mindset. In so many different areas, and not just uh, by enslaving us physically, but it being enslaved to things. And as a result of this, we see the constant pursuit for freedom. The problem is this, mankind, by its nature, turns to everything but the answer. Which leads us to the second point. That God's answer to our loss of freedom has always been Jesus Christ. Always been. If you go and you look throughout the history of the Bible, the scriptures, you can see the scarlet thread that has gone throughout the Old Testament and was fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. He was continually telling us of this Savior that was coming. It was always intended, it always was intended to be Jesus. Acts 13, verses 38 to 39 says this, Brothers, listen, right? Listen, hey, pay attention. We are here to proclaim that through this man, Jesus, there is forgiveness for your sins. Everyone who believes in him is made right in God's sight, something the law of Moses could never do. That it is through Jesus that we receive our freedom. So if you're looking for relief from the bondage of sin and the oppression in your life, physically or spiritually, you're never going to find it in substances. You're never going to find it in relationships. You're never going to find it in material things. You can search and you can see history. Uh, it's written in history. People continually thinking that they could find their pleasure and their freedom and their satisfaction in all these things only to be let down. Because the only place we can find it is in Jesus. E Ecclesiastes tells us this way that uh, eternity is set in the heart of man. The way I read that, the way I view that, and the best way I could explain that is this, that, that there's a God-shaped hole, an eternal hole set in the heart of man that can only be filled by an eternal being, and that being is Jesus Christ. The third point is this, that Jesus came to free us from death, sin, and anything that enslaves us. We know this is true in, in the scriptures in Colossians 1, 19-23. It simply says this, For God, in all his fullness, was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. 
This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. But you must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world. And I, Paul, have been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. And we carry that same proclamation as believers. That, that God has worked all of this freedom through Christ Jesus. And that as we receive the work of Christ in our lives, we receive freedom from those things that have bound us up. The fourth point that was made in this article is that God gives us freedom to choose our own path. God has not created us to be robots. This is one of the answers that I would also give as to why there are bad things in the world. People say, well, God, why doesn't God just stop this and stop that and stop this? The truth is, is if God begins to impose his will in everywhere, he's going to impose his will in your life, and you're not going to like that. Because you will no longer have free will. You will have to just go around like a robot doing everything that God tells you to do. But then if you're a robot, you can't choose to love God and to follow God. And that's not what God wants. God wants free will and free choice. And there's two things that I want to speak about when we're speaking on this particular point, that God gives us freedom to choose. And I mentioned it a couple of times already that a proclamation of freedom is not the same as actually living in freedom. We know this because of our own history. We've seen many proclamations, declarations that we are a free nation, we are a free nation, and yet our history shows us that there have been constant points throughout our history of slavery. Being enslaved, many being enslaved. So just because I, we say there's freedom doesn't mean that we've actually embraced what brings freedom. You can declare that you are free all day long, but unless you have truly allowed Christ to come into your life and remove the things of the flesh and the world, you'll never fully experience freedom. And you will continue to be enslaved to the things that have you bound and have had you bound for so long. The second point I want to make is just because you are free to do something doesn't mean that you should. Just because you have the legal right to say it doesn't mean you should. Just because you have the legal right to post it doesn't mean you should. Just because you have the legal right to do it doesn't mean you should. Just because you have an opinion and have the legal right to share it doesn't mean you should. We're supposed to be kingdom-minded people, and yet all I continue to see is people using worldly tactics, worldly arguments, getting involved in petty squabbles, is the opinion that you have that you think you'd so desperately have to share with someone worth sacrificing an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus with somebody? Did you hear what I said? Is the opinion that you think you just so desperately have to share worth sacrificing an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus with somebody? Sure, you have an opinion. But as Christians, we're not called to just share a, our opinion. We're called to be kingdom-minded people. And sometimes that means keep your mouth shut. Sometimes that means the things that we want to say don't benefit the kingdom of God. I might have the freedom to do some things, but is it going to lead someone to the kingdom? We, we know the saying, it says, whatever you do in moderation, someone behind you will do in excess. Those that are following, those that are looking to you. I'm not making any arguments for anything right now. All I'm just telling you is there's a lot of things that we've 
deemed okay. And we said, I'm going to do this. I'm fine with it. I've made my arguments in my head that I can do this and I can do that. And yet we're leading a generation to hell. I know that's blunt. We're talking about freedom. Isn't freedom in Christ worth sometimes sacrificing things we think we should be able to do? If it means that we can lead others to freedom in Christ, I say yes. Mark 8, 34 through 38, as I prepare to close, says this, Then calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So today, this is not a message of doom and gloom. This is a message of hope and freedom. And yes, I've made sacrifices. I've given up things. I've said no to things. But you know what? I don't live in regret over those things. I'm not constantly sitting in my home, boy, I wish I could do this. And I wish, man, my life is free. I enjoy my life. I have a great family and great friends and people around me. It doesn't mean I don't have hardships and difficult times. What I'm saying is that I've made sacrifices for the kingdom of God because ultimately it's the kingdom that matters the most. You want to experience true freedom? Then just live a surrendered life to Christ. That's the best, and in my opinion, the only option. Jesus paid the price for ultimate freedom, and all we have to do is receive it and then walk in it. Walk in the freedom that we have in Jesus. So today, as we prepare to close this time together, you might be in one of many categories. Maybe you are someone that the church would classify as a sinner, someone that has not accepted Jesus, someone that has not received the salvation of Christ. Simply put, you have not embraced the work of Christ in your life, and he's ready for you. All you got to do is just say yes. Maybe you found yourself in a place where you don't know uh, how you got to this place. Jesus is calling you back. So as we begin to pray, as we begin to just allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives in this moment. Here's what I want you to do. Just say, God, I want to experience your freedom. I want to experience all that you have for me. I want to just walk in the freedom that you have given. If you do that, in this moment, God's going to meet you right where you are. Let's pray. Lord, freedom is what we desire. Freedom is what we desire. We long to be free. And, and our nation, uh, we've seen... As I said, many proclamations of freedom, but there's been so, so much bondage in our nation. Not just from slavery, but bondage to things, substances, bad relationships. God, I'm, I'm just praying that today as we celebrate freedom, Lord, that we can also celebrate our freedom in you. Lord, I pray your Holy Spirit touch us, strengthen us, help us to walk in freedom. If there's anyone today that needs to know you in a personal way, uh, relationship and begin this journey with you that right now in this moment they'll do that they'll accept you and those that have fallen away or those that have maybe walked away and distanced themselves god that uh, they would just be turn around and come back to you and the lord we just pray your blessing be upon uh, us today strengthen us god we thank you for freedom that we have in you jesus we love you today in jesus name amen thank you for joining us today uh, our prayer is that God would touch you and bless you. And that as we celebrate the freedom that we have in Christ, we would share our story with someone today. God bless you. We'll see you again next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for our online service this morning. Even though we couldn't gather together, we miss you guys, but we are so glad that you tuned in here. If you need to connect with us, whether that be uh, prayer requests, praise report, whatever. Just put that down in the comments below or you can head over to our website at www.mynvcog.com. Also on our website, you can purchase your t-shirts, your God Moment t-shirts, or you can give your tithe and offering there. Whatever you need to do, most of it can probably be found over on our website. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We'll see you tonight online at seven o'clock.